I thought it might be fun to take a step back from all of the hard drive imaging solutions and network attached storage discussions and things like that and talk about something that I find extremely cool and it is a massive technical achievement. I use this service every single episode that I make. It's called archive.org or a lot of people know the Internet Wayback Machine or the Internet Archive. Archive.org is extremely incredible. It has all kinds of features like the Wayback Machine that probably a lot of you know. Did you know that it runs on a bunch of different Linux data centers and it's complete all out of California and it's completely mirrored over in Egypt? And they're approaching a petabyte worth of storage. They're constantly having to reinvent how to store things because they store so much content. But they go much, much, much farther beyond just keeping things like old snapshots of web pages. And in this episode of An In-Depth Look, we're going to go in-depth into archive.org and find out how I use it every single episode to convert these shows to Og Theora, to make thumbnails, to do all kinds of things, to do free internet hosting, to do free file hosting for all kinds of different types of Creative Commons content and so forth. So we'll do a walkthrough of archive.org and I'll talk to how I use archive.org to produce shows and make hosting and make make it possible to do hosting of shows on the cheap. It's a great service and it's definitely worth an in-depth look. Really quickly, before we start, I'd like to mention that this show is sponsored by GoDaddy.com. And if you use my codes Linux, you can save 10% on any item at GoDaddy.com. And if you want to get some hosting, which GoDaddy has fantastic hosting, I've used them for years, use our code Linux20. That'll save you 20% on one, two, or three years of shared hosting. And when you use those codes, it really helps us out. It lets GoDaddy know the people out there that are watching these shows want to help support our show, so we help support GoDaddy. And in a tough economy, we really appreciate it whenever we can show value to our advertisers. All right, so let's take a look at archive.org. How do I use it? Well, anything you upload that's a movie or an audio file, when you upload it archive.org, and it can be a big file. I've done files as larger than 500 megabytes before. They'll give you an FTP login, or if it's a smaller file, just through a web page login. And then you upload it to your account, and whatever goes onto archive.org gets mirrored across their distribution network. And then, once that mirroring is done, it begins a conversion process. It converts it to several different types of formats. First of which is Aug Theora. And the reason why they do Aug Theora is because that is a video codec that is an open source standard and is not encumbered with certain patent licensing restrictions that other codecs like H.264 and uh, DivX are. So they'll convert whatever you upload to Aug Theora, which means you can take content that you produce. Like I'll produce this episode in H.264 for YouTube's sake. But I don't necessarily, not everybody that's downloading my shows wants it in that format. So I could either spend another couple of hours, maybe even four or five hours, re encoding to Aug, or I spend 15, 20 minutes uploading to archive.org. They run through the conversion process for me and they host the file, and all I have to do is link to it. That is so killer. The other thing they'll do is they'll automatically generate uh, GIF animated images. They'll take chunks of the video, different stills from the video, and they'll make an animated GIF out of it. So people can look at the GIF and they can get a sliding snapshot of what, essentially a slideshow of what your show is about. They'll also make several different file sizes, so you can get small files and large files. So if you want to be able to link people to the, uh, here's the big HD version, then also here's the smaller, more compact version, it's really kind of a nice solution. The only catch is, is it does have to be a Creative Commons work. So that means it has to be free, and then there's lots of different types of licenses there that you can associate with it. It has to be, you know, like for mine, I do Creative Commons, and then I say share alike with attribution, which means you can share it all you want. Uh, I also say you can use it, but if you do use it in another production, I do ask that you give me credit for at least my part of whatever you used. And uh, as, long as, you, as long as you work within the Creative Commons framework, which if you're putting your content out online anyways, it makes a lot of sense. They will host it for you. That is huge. Let me repeat that. Archive.org will host your content for you. And they've got a fast distribution network. That big. Hosting costs are huge. Now, I don't host everything through them. I actually host most of my stuff on GoDaddy servers and ServerBeach servers or YouTube.com. But for all of the Og Theor content and things like that, archive.org is where I put everything. So they've got my content up there in my videos and they also have lots of other producers videos up there. But they've also got 
mainstream content that's fallen out of copyright. More classic. Um, I, uh, I have a show at jupiterbroadcasting.com called Radio Revolver, and it features a lot of old-time radio productions that are just classics like uh, Dragnet and The Shadow, uh, The Blue Beetle, things like that. Well, all of those have been uploaded to archive.org under the public domain rights, which means it's, it's public domain. You can Everyone can get to it, and they're all hosted up there at archive.org. But they've also got old cartoons, old Superman cartoons are up there. No, they're not super great resolution, but that's because the original source material isn't that amazing. They've got so they've got old Superman cartoons up there. They've got old types of movies up there. Uh, they've got uh, they've got here's a couple of great ones. They've got they've got the Man Who Knew Too Much, uh, Sex Madness. Who wouldn't want to watch Sex Madness? Uh, Triumph of the Will. All these really the Kid. That's a classic one. The Birth of a Nation. Old, really well known productions are up there, and it's tons of content that you can get for free. All rights. It's totally legitimate to download it and watch it wherever you're at in the world. I think. That is huge. They've also got old news reels up there. Um, one of the things I did in Radio Revolver for fun was at the end of some episodes, I included World War II news bits. Things like the anchors would say, and come on, say, you know, the Nazis have invaded this and things like that. They've got all those recordings up there. Oh, um, War of the Worlds, the original War of the Worlds radio broadcast that everybody freaked out and thought they were under an alien invasion. You can find that up at archive.org. So I don't know if I've, if I've gone on enough about archive.org because it's really an amazing service. Uh, maybe I should just show you a few of these things that I keep talking about because they're so cool. All right, so here we are at the archive.org homepage. And if I only have like one negative t thing to say about the archive.org is their homepage, their start page, doesn't really give away the fact that they have all of this amazing content underneath the surface. But when you have as much content as they do, I'm not sure how you would properly illustrate that. So it's kind of an understandable um, issue. Okay, so they have a section called Moving Images, and that's basically where you're going to find TV shows and movies. And you can scroll through here and you can find out all these different areas. Uh, you know, computer and technology, that's obviously going to be new productions that people have put out. But you've also got some of the early 80s, like old computer shows from way back in the day, featuring like people that were looking at the... Um, first kind of personal computers and stuff like that. The area I think we'll look at, though, is the movies. You'll notice in here they have current stuff, and then they'll also have... Uh, air, these are like groups of people that have put together things like f um, classic feature films. So we'll go into the feature film section, and we'll look what we got. Let's go into the sci-fi horror section. That should be pretty cool. Oop. Oh, come on, are you kidding me? Night of the Living... Oh, Teenagers from Outer Space wouldn't be bad. But let's look at Night of the Living Dead. Oh, epic. Okay. So over here on the left-hand side, for people that listen to the audio version, we get two things. We get a GIF, animated GIF slideshow of what this movie's about. So you can kind of see the different sections of the movie. And then in the middle of the page, they have a flash play where you can actually watch the video embedded inside the website. Below it, they have a description. And then over on the left-hand side, they have the different downloads you could get. They have the AUG video, which has kind of been a, which is a, a more compressed, smaller version. They have you can download this entire Night of the Living Dead, the 1968 version, for 408 megabytes. That's not bad. You could also get the Big Daddy MPEG-2 full res for four gigabytes. You can go in there and there's they have lots of different little. They have also they have a smaller file. They have a, a 512 kilobit version, which uh, is is going to uh, you know come in a little bit under 400 megs because it's basically 512. 500, what they mean is 512 kilobits per second is the bit rate of the video. Um, so just after digging around just for a few seconds, we've already come across a classic Night of the Living Dead zombie movie. <laughs> I mean, right? Uh, Archive.org also has an audio section. And then you would go through the audio section, and they have open source audio, things, music, uh, podcasts, all kinds of things on here that are, are um, probably something that you might want to check out. The one I'm going to look at because it's my personal favorite is radio programs, and then they have an old-time radio section. This is where I've gotten all of my, well, almost all of my source information for Radio Revolver, but uh, there's also just things in here that are, are just classics that are great to listen to for the commute. I would take these episodes for Radio Revolver, and I would um, I would digitally remaster them so they sounded better and I'd put them in stereo and things like that. But, you know, if you didn't want to do that, you could just simply jump in here and you could grab um, old episodes of The Falcon and you could download. They have almost every episode ever released. They don't have all of them for all shows. It'll be very depending on how much people have been able to collect. 
but it's it's pretty epic in the amount of different episodes. The content is crazy. They have uh, they have so much that you could literally spend forever on here looking for stuff and still not find everything. Uh, here, Sherlock Holmes is another one. If you want to get some good Sherlock Holmes mysteries while you're driving to work one day or doing the dishes or riding the bike, whatever you might be doing, this is the place to find this stuff. It's great. They've also got some old software stuff that's fallen out of copyright. It's all really old stuff for the most part, but not completely. They do archive some game patches and things like that for even some of the newer games. Um, and the great part about that is it's easy to find. You don't have to jump through hoops like you do on some of those game patch websites, and their bandwidth is great. So archive.org is somewhere, uh, something that I think a lot of people should check out for more than just the Internet Wayback Machine. It's a complete library resource beyond uh, what I think most people associate with it. So I think it's pretty clear that archive.org is an incredible resource. It's Linux-powered. They're approaching a petabyte worth of storage, and they're mirroring all of that across the United States and over into Egypt. That is huge, across the world even. Okay, so, if you have any questions for me about archive.org or if you have other online services like archive.org that just kind of blows your mind at how useful and how amazing that is, uh, let me know. Hit me up on Twitter, twitter.com slash chrislas, or shoot me an email, chris at jupiterbroadcasting.com. Like I mentioned earlier in the show, I have these episodes in several formats. Og Theor is one of them. Uh, I have them in just plain Og audio or MP3 audio. I also have them in iPod portable downloads. You can find all of those over at jupiterbroadcasting.com. And thanks again for watching this episode of an in-depth look. This episode of an in-depth look is sponsored by GoDaddy.com, the world's largest host and domain name registrar. If you're ready to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has got you covered. Domain names as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting with unlimited disk space and bandwidth. Do-it-yourself website builders, dedicated servers, and SSL certificates, and so much more. Plus, as an in-depth viewer, enter promo code LINUX20 at checkout and save an additional 20% off any one, two, or even three years website hosting plan. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com.